matter who are playing at Wembley in the cup final, the mighty crowd goes just the same every year. The tension and excitement of this very British sporting event are eloquently presented to you in this exclusive film by Pathé Gazette. Listen to a hundred thousand voices lifted up in community singing. Sheffield Wednesday in white shirts and West Bromwich Albion, who forsake their stripes for plain dark shirts, come onto the field. Mr. Fogg of Bolton, the man with the whistle, meets the two skippers and Ronnie Starling wins the toss for Sheffield Wednesday. The start is sensational. There's no superstition about the cup final. Whoever gets the first goal wins the game. Within two minutes of the start, Sheffield get a goal and you'll see it in slow motion. Starling wanders to the right wing, picks up a loose pass and slips it to Palethorpe. The Wednesday centre forward slips in between the backs and baffles Pearson the goalie with a shot that looks quite easy. But the Albion are not at all put out by this setback. Their forwards get moving in line and are well supported by the halves. 20 minutes after the Wednesday's opening point, Boys, who played a brilliant game all the afternoon on the left wing, bangs home the equaliser. With the score at one all after a really fine first half of good football, the Wednesday kick off after the interval, and the crowd are going to get a feast of goals that has not been served up in cup finals for many a year. take the lead. The diminutive Mark Hooper shoots, the ball hits the post and cuts across into the net. West Bromwich again fight back and for the second time equalised. Sanford takes a shot that is deflected by a Wednesday back and the ball is in. The yelling crowd is getting thrills in plenty and the climax is near. Only three minutes to the end. Ellis Rimmer, Sheffield's left winger, who had scored in every round of the cup, gets his head to a pass from Sharp and scores. A minute to go, and again Rimmer scores Sheffield's fourth goal. Pearson will remember Wednesday every Saturday. Starling receives the cup from the Prince of Wales, who also presents the medals to the players of both teams. It's the finish to a thrilling afternoon's play. Cook goes to Yorkshire. And now Mr. B. Edwards, the famous sporting journalist, introduces the two captains. Let me introduce you to the...